how do you determine as a pediatric audiologist when, say a child that's just using hearing aids, when that's not enough, when it's time to consider a cochlear implant, especially now with the criteria expanding, mm -hmm. the answer to that question has probably changed over the years. It, it definitely has changed and changed. And so when I was first starting out as a clinician many, many years ago, um, I, again, obviously those children that had limited benefit from their hearing aid and what we would call very little or no open set word recognition were candidates. And now we're seeing children that, you know, children and adults that have 30% or 40% word recognition. Um, and, and, you know, we have the guidelines that are established out there that they have some limited, what we would call open set recognition, but it's just not enough. Some of these measures that we do in the booth and we test at a it's quiet, you know, in a quiet situation at a level at 60 and sometimes actually conversational speech or even louder, and we get these scores, that's not what that child is listening to in everyday life. That's not what their school environment is. They need to be able to overhear all sounds as much as possible, soft sounds, medium sounds, and loud sounds. So when we see a child... Um, that we look... We see that they have uh, limited or... Um, limited high frequency audibility, for example, let's just take a sloping hearing loss where there's good low frequency hearing, but then we start to see that the high frequency hearing is, is falling off and we're just not able to get, uh, you know, good audibility out at the high frequencies. Those are children that we will talk with the parents and start a dialogue with educators, speech pathologists, whomever, to say, let's think about how can we optimize that child hearing all sounds, all levels, and here across the frequency range. So we, we look at that. We also, for older children that may be using two hearing aids and have some open set recognition and may be doing okay, we're seeing that they're struggling. They're having a difficult time in school, that their auditory skills perhaps have plateaued. And those are the children that we at least open that discussion Again, and it's, it has to be a team approach when you do that. You have to involve parents, surgeons, educators, audiologists, speech pathologists. It needs to be a team approach to see, is this something that we can consider for this child? Can we give this child the best that we can offer in all listening environments?